My name is Paul Payment, and I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. When I was 25 years old, I moved to Los Angeles, and there I attended graduate school at the University of Southern California. And I received my master's degree in drawing and painting in 1995. I started teaching uh, drawing and painting at Cypress College. So I was doing two things simultaneously. I was working as a professional artist and I was also working as an educator. In 1998 approximately I started working on this body of work called hybrids. Uh, my hybrid series are a series of watercolor, egg temper paintings and installations and they involve the commingling of nature and technology and one of the reasons that I use insects is not really because I, I love insects or entomology, but for me they are metaphoric in that sense that they represent nature, the natural, the eternal. Insects have been around for, um, you know, since the dawn of time, but they really haven't evolved in that sense. Where with technology, our, everything in technology is constantly evolving at an at a incredibly rapid pace. Um, our cell phones are obsolete as soon as we walk outside of the, the store with them. And so to bring these together represents for me um, the kind of a reconciliation of who people are, right? We're part of our past, we're part of the eternal. And so it's, it's the reconciling of all, these, all of these different things coming together. I've always had a fascination in that two people can look at the same thing and interpret it completely different. We can, you and I can watch a car crash and you're gonna see something different than I noticed or I saw the way I interpreted it. It's gonna be different than the way that you interpreted that. And I wanted the paintings to address that. The way that I chose to address it was in a metaphoric sense. So I was using something like insects and everybody, if I say the word insect, everybody has a response. You know, most people go, you know, they're kind of interesting, but I hate the creepy little legs on them. And for me, that was a great jumping off point because I immediately address the audience. They either go in one direction or the other. But at the same time, I wanted them to be a little bit more seductive and that's where the coloration comes in. I always think about color in terms of association, you know, red being with stop or with passion or whatever, but the colors with this particular series, I don't want them necessarily to be associated with the insects that are being depicted or the objects that are being depicted, but this is now, it's a common ground and it acts as an, a new species, but I also want the colors to be somewhat seductive and pleasing to the eye. Um, you know, it's kind of candy coating the, the medicine. Uh, I'm not thinking necessarily about the associations with the color, but how the colors have an optical effect on the viewer. So, for example, if I'm using a, um, I might use a dull orangish brown with um, a bright orange instead. So the commonality, the common ground is the orange, but one's dull and one's bright. The brighter one is gonna jump forward. So in terms of the layering of the images, it allows me to keep separate areas distinct. When I first started doing this series, they weren't as much about technology as they were about consumerism. I was using objects that um, people could easily recognize. But my ideas also evolved into creating or finding things that were exclusively about technology or technological th consumer objects, things that people could easily recognize. Um, but there was also randomness to it, and the interpretations weren't as forced. They became a little bit more poetic, and that's what I was really interested in. It's much more of a poetic expression than one that is a political statement or an advertisement. Uh, egg tempera has a really interesting history. It's among the oldest painting mediums that were ever used, and it's incredibly basic. But I love the older associations that people have with egg tempera as um, a pre-Renaissance 
favorite. And, and I, I see this playing really well with the, the insect subject matter, the eternalness of that, that egg tempera kind of fuses in or dovetails in really well with that. Technically, it's kind of hard to use, but I really love kind of the, the stiffness, the graphic part of it. I felt worked really well with this concept. There's also a natural transparency that the paint has. All paint has three different properties to it. It's got a, a binder, it's got a solvent, and then it's got pigment. And in this case, egg temper is the binder. And the way that it's made is that you take a, a normal egg, you crack it, you separate the white from the yolk. After you have the yolk, you puncture the membrane and all the fluid comes out, which is yellow. And then you add a little bit of distilled water to it because it doesn't have any chemical properties. Mix it and then you just add powdered pigment to it. It's pretty magical. You've got paint and you can understand how great egg, the protein of, of an egg is as a binder because um, maybe you've had an egg for breakfast and if you let it dry on the plate, it's almost impossible to get off. It's very, very difficult. You really have to work at it. And that's why um, it was used as a binder and it, it works perfectly. Unfortunately though, um, like all things, egg temper has limitations. Uh, when I wanted to increase the scale of the paintings, I had to change mediums because egg temper doesn't really allow itself to work at a large scale. You have to work fairly small because the brushes that you use are small, the paint dries really fast, so it's, it's hard to work really large. I wanted to take the paintings to another level and, and really fuse them into the walls and into the architecture rather than having them be a distinct statement. And in doing so, I had to change the medium. So I started using acrylic because of its versatility. Um, I, I kind of like the idea that acrylic paint doesn't have those long-term associations that even when I was using egg tempera, Egg temper has associations. Acrylic is a new medium, so it, it's kind of a great starting point from that matter. Where if I were to use um, oil paint, oil again dates back to the Renaissance and has all these associations with all the artists that have been using it.